Yo, what's up guys? Okay, so um, I want to first thank Castle for helping me test all of this out. I have compiled a list of all the new melee poise breakpoint, which I tested all of it myself. Um, if you see any mistake here, please let me know. I'll change it so we can update this sheet um, to be perfectly accurate. I'd hope so. I think all the breakpoints are accurate. Um, but uh, like I said here, the error margin for this poise sheet is one poise because uh, sometimes the armors doesn't show decimal values and it can change by one poise when you're testing in game. So keep, always keep that in mind. Like if a breakpoint is like 71 or 81, the chances are the actual breakpoint is 70 or 80. But uh, just to be safe, you add one point or during testing, uh, 71 was actually needed. Okay, so. I want to just go over this uh, this quickly so that you guys all have the new poise breakpoint and you can play with it and you can understand what's going on when you're playing. So just to make sure everyone understands, the R1, the running R1, and the crouch R1 of an attack have the same value, uh, whether it's one-handed or two-handed. Same thing for the R2. R2 and running R2 have the same value. Shield poking has the uh, one-handed R1 value, so keep that in mind. And you ha also have to note that not all attacks within the same weapon class share the same values. What do I mean by that? Like for instance, rapiers, some rapier attacks, uh, like a rapier R2 from uh, Clean Rot will be just one straight R2, which is the values show here. Uh, like this is the R2 from a Clean Rot. But on the other hand, a um, a Rogers Rapier uh, will probably have a different poise value than a Clean Rot. So we only show like one uh, one attack, but uh, you'll be able to... Uh, I'll be probably adding that in the future. Okay, so let's start. Um, actually, uh, before I go through this, there's one big takeaway though. And the biggest takeaway is that a lot more weapons always poise break and a lot more attack always poise break. And when we say always poise break, I'm referring to uh, a passive poise state of 133, which is still the maximum amount of poise. So in a passive poise state, a lot of weapons will always stagger. And when we say always stagger, we're talking about the normal R1, the one-handed R1 and all of the other attacks. So great swords always staggers, great spear always staggers. Noted though, great spears, when I said the one-handed uh, R1 is the same for shield poke, so that means shield poking with a great spear will always stagger. You're, you're not gonna be able to tank a great spear shield poke, but uh, the great spear attack when shield poking is the easiest to, to run around and to walk around. So it's technically the easiest to deal with, but you can't tank it, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, curved Greatsword, no surprise. Always stuns, Great Hammer, same thing, Great Axe, and Colossals, obviously. Um, it's to be noted, though, uh, it's not because Greatsword R1 stuns 133 that you'll stun everyone. Um, when they're in the Hyper Armor, uh, values will start to matter a lot more, but here we're only talking about passive poise. Okay, so let's start, uh, let's continue this with... Uh, some of the small class so big changes even at the smallest level like at, for the smallest poise damaging weapons uh, before that was not a thing two-handed jump attack for daggers will always stun now and one-handed uh, r2 jump attack will also always stun so one-handed dagger has now an option to always stun players which it did not have before you could tank uh, jump r2 before dispatch so noted here, power stance 123 poise, which is very high. Uh, the one-handed dagger uh, doing 41 poise damage, and the two-hand uh, and the two-handed R1 doing 52. So not very high. Um, so that means you can probably tank. Uh, I think three dagger hits at max poise. I mean, you can do the math. You know, 41, 41, 41. Yeah. So. Um, Let's move on to the claws. Uh, claws actually were a pain to test. Um, the <laughs> again here, when we say jump R two, it's like when you two hand a claw weapon, it comes in with two weapons. So the jump R two is actually when you 
you know, you claw with both of the claws, but it's weird because the L1 is blocking when you're using claws like two-handed. So you actually need a second claw. So you basically have four claws, like two on in your pockets and two in your hand. And that that's the only way you get access to the L1, which has different poise values than the... Um, uh, then the R1 sometimes. So uh, here, like I, I noted that the power stance did for, uh, 49 poise damage for the L1, which gives the same uh, same attack as the uh, two-handed L1. But in this case, it, it's the same. But I noted that the jump attack, like the jump L1 and the two-handed R1, which both are like jumping in the air using both claws to attack, like having actually two claws, like two sets of claws will do more poise damage in that case. So very strange um, little interaction here that should be noted. And then uh, one-handed jumping R2 always stuns. So this is gonna be a trend for everything really. The one-handed jumping R2 now always stuns and the two-handed jumping R2 always stuns no matter how small the weapon is. And when we say always stun, again, it's max poise, bull goat with the talisman, one through three. Moving on to rapiers, I think this is one of the strongest weapon right now with this patch. Um, with the two-handed R1, that's a big one. Two-handed R1 being 71, that means that two, uh, two rapier poke two-handed will always stun, but you need two. Um, it was not the case before, so that's a very, very strong addition. Um, Two-handed R2 at 121 almost always stuns, but it's it's very high. Uh, the one-handed R155, I honestly think that you're going to need a minimum for, for your build if you want to be a tryhard. You're going to need a minimum of 71 to tank the rapier, but uh, as we're, we're going to see later on, I, I would even go higher than that. Okay, so... Here, there's also the um, jumping L1. That was a bit tricky to test, but if all three hits hit your opponent, it does stun one, three, three, but um, the stun is like weird. Uh, it's like a very low stun too. And, uh, you know, getting all three hits to connect during testing was annoying. So I'm not 100% confident about that. It seemed to stun on three hits, but like in practice, you're very rarely going to hit all three rapier hits while with the jumping L1. So be careful with that, with uh, with attacks that need to hit multiple times. Okay, for the whips, I thought at first that it was the same value as the rapier, but I had to go ahead and test that again because... <sighs> And long and behold, there are some differences. So two-handed jumping, slightly different. So uh, keep that in mind. But on in the case of the um, of the whip, uh, two-handed R2 does a lot of poise damage. The R2 that was tested was not a roomy though. It was the normal whip since it hit it hit it hits once. Uh, so it's going to be a different value for the Arumi, which hits twice, fully charged and stuff like that. Actually, it might be the, the same. Like, I didn't test fully charged. Those R2 are, are, are uncharged. So it might be... Um, it actually might be the same for Arumi, but uh, I haven't tested all the whips, obviously. I tested one for each class, and, you know, you can do the mental gymnastics. It's probably the same for everything in the same class that has the same animation. Um, but it does not need to have the same animation because like we see with twin blades, twin blades share the same poise values as um, like straight sword, um, straight sword, curved sword, katanas, axes, and spears. But I put, I put it in a different category because it differs with attacks that hit multiple times. So for instance, the jumping uh, two-handed jumping R1 hits twice and will do a different amount of poise damage than um, the aforementioned. But... Um, Going back to the whip, uh, the notable one for me was uh, the power stance uh, jumping L, um, the power stance jumping attack that always stuns. So jumping L1 with whips always stunning and jump handed one, uh, jump attack one handed uh, uh, R2 always stunning as well. So those are not particularly uh, bad attacks for a whip actually, those are pretty good. So I, I think those were interesting. Okay, so when we get to twin blade and above, uh, you'll notice that there's twin blades, there's fist, and then there's uh, uh, all of these. Uh, like I said, they both really share the same value, except they differ 
in like uh, the jump attacks where it hits multiple times. So they all have like a bit of differences here, but they're basically all the same. The biggest, the biggest W here is one-handed R2 for all these weapon class stuns max boys. So one-handed R2. So that means you have an option for sword and board now. If um, if you're playing sword and board, you'll always stun max boys bulldog if you space them and punish them with an R2. That's true for katana, axes, axe R2 sh uh, shit though, and even spear. So. Same thing of note here for Twin Blade. Jumping R2, no surprise, it stuns. Uh, the power stance L1 when jumping, that was another like uh, tricky one because you need all the hits to connect. I think there might be four. Uh, so, but I mean, it always stuns if you hit it. It's not as hard to hit as the Rapier, like we said earlier. But uh, yeah, that's, that's to be noted. So same thing, the fist weapons, fist weapons doing like, you know, two L1s with fist weapon will always stun everyone. So that's big. And then the one handed R2 always stuns too. So one handed R2, um, two handed R2 also always stunning. What's cool is that it gives you like one attack from neutral with the fist that's fairly fast that will uh, pretty much uh, break anyone's poise. So you can actually space now, space people with a fist weapon and uh, and stop them from attacking you back. So pretty nice addition, really digging how they, um, they implemented this sort of like small weapon class. Uh, the, the poise here to me like really makes sense and those are, are good numbers especially for you know for this um, this weight of weapon I really like that so uh, continuing straight sword curved sword katanas axes spears uh, I've actually went and tested the running attack for the curved sword because I was wondering if it was the same um, as the L1 and it is even though it hits multiple times in, in the case of the curved sword it actually does the same as an L1 so uh, it's it's not uh, it's not going to be confusing when fighting um, again our, the one handed R2 always stuns that's good two L1s with any of these uh, will stun max bull gold but you need two L1s a uh, weird little quirk here the two handed jumping R1 for any of these uh, stuns 132 <laughs> so if you have 131 or 130 or 129 um you might not stun them <laughs> so a little weird so basically uh the two-handed jumping or one will stun anything but full bull goat so full bull goat is the only thing who's going to be able to tank that so pretty interesting a bit a bit strange like i mean at this point you could have made it stun everything but hey it's whatever Okay, for HDS, so Heavy Trusting Swords. Heavy Trusting Swords, we're getting into the territory of nearly every attack will poise break. So to be noted here, the one-handed jump R1, you cannot, it will not always guarantee stun. Uh, one-handed R2 will. Uh, Two-handed jumping R1 will also always stun. Uh, so a lot of attacks here. We're starting to get into the territory of a lot of attacks uh, always stun now, so really nice uh this is a buff to the heavy trusting sword uh, if you've been trying to counter up to this point the heavy trusting sword by stacking poise well you were fighting it wrong because now you can't <laughs> so again the r2 you can't poise it even one-handed so that's a, a big one and the two-handed jumping r1 you cannot poise it so you'll notice that i put all these weapons like in order so as the further we go, the more attacks that cannot be poised through. And now we're at the ball sack and the flail. Um, it's very similar to the heavy trusting sword. It's just that it does a little bit poise damage, a little, little bit more poise damage, but ultimately the same attacks can be poised through as the heavy trusting sword. It's just that the values are a bit higher across the board. So um, hammers are actually pretty strong. Um, you can't you can't tank a one-handed R2 from hammers anymore. So I'm actually curious to see like how people implement these movesets. Uh, when I say ball sack here, I've not tested the ball sack Ash of War. So this is one thing we're gonna have to test in the future, like the uh, the Ash of Wars. What's the poise damage? Like I remember clearly when we tested uh, 
impaling trust would always stun so that was kind of that was kind of neat but i want to know if like impaling trust with a dagger for instance always stun so i don't know if it matters for certain ash of wars maybe it does not but that's something we're gonna have to test in the future because you know you might have a weapon that does not have an r2 that can always stun but you might be able to put an ash of war on it that always stuns and finally, the Alberts and the Sight, which are almost as strong as our class of weapons that nothing can stop them. Um, Albert and Sight, the only attack that you can resist, and it's still fairly high, is uh, the one-handed attack for 125 poise. The rest all stuns max, uh, max poise. So Sight and Albert being in the same category, which means a two-handed Albert and a two-handed Sight cannot be poised through. So that's actually pretty good. Um, I actually like it. I know some people think the Alberts are strong. They are strong, but they're not as oppressive. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, in my opinion, uh, un unless uh, it, there's a, it, unless it becomes a endure DPS race, which, uh, which we talked about in our, our latest, uh, latest vid when we read the patch notes, uh, unless it becomes that, like the best setups in my opinion right now with all these changes, I think the the weapons that have the had had the biggest buffs were rapiers uh, because they do a lot of poise damage now, and you you ultimately cannot uh, counter a rapier with high poise anymore. So two handed rapiers are extremely deadly to me. Those are probably the strongest weapon at the moment. I would say they're followed closely by uh, double lance, which did not get touched uh, in a sense that uh, the the crouch attack is still the same, unlike ultra great swords. Um, but also the lance now, the full moveset always stuns, so they are even more versatile. But that's cool though, because you want people to use not just a crouch attack, and you want people to use the full moveset. So that's a good one. But again, sights here, sights being now, you know, an option that you can use two-handed and not have to worry about someone just being brain dead and tanking your attacks, making it useless. Now your sight can mean something. So if you like the sight, this is huge for you and this is big. So uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. Overview of the poise. I'm going to be posting this sheet here that I made with all the testing that I made. Again, big shout out to Castle. Uh, it, like Castle helped me test this for over five hours and I tested even more of this on my own. Probably took me like about 10 hours to test all of this shit. But uh, hopefully that is of use to you guys because, uh, you know, it didn't take us too, mo too long to test everything out in a sense that the patch just came out and we already have all the breakpoints. So I hope you guys make good use of this. Thank you guys, everyone, for watching. I'll keep uh, posting content for 1.07 and I'll catch you guys up next time. Take it easy and take care.